So, uh, Chris Kent, uh, there's my Twitter, there's my blog. I'm an office development MVP and a member of the core team. Very exciting. I have several list formatting tips all rolled up together today uh, as a special late Christmas present or birthday present for Vesta. That sounds great. Uh, sure, whatever it's present. Sounds good. All right, let's take a look. So what if I got this birthday list here? All right, uh, we see that uh, my birthday was yesterday, um, and I had a Hello Kitty theme party because I actually share a birthday with my daughter. Very exciting. Uh, we've got Vess's birthday, right? That's today. He's working anyway. And then uh, Stefan Bauer doesn't have a birthday because he's actually immortal. All right, but what if I wanted to change this up? I wanted to apply some themes to this, right, to make it look a little better. Uh, so that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about how to do some cool stuff with this using some exciting theme colors, right? So if I want to match those theme colors, I mean, I can always come in here, right? I can format this view, right? And I come over here, and I've got something. All right, so I'm going to grab, I'm going to do a, it's called a view format, right? So I'm going to apply that to the view itself, right? So I apply my schema here, and I'm going to add an additional row class, right? And it's pretty simple here. If I want to apply one here, um, I could say MS BG color, and this is where I get to pick a color. So if we take a look over here on this UI Fabric color site, right, this is how you build these things. So you're going to put font color, BG color, border color, hyphen, then whatever the color name you want. All right, where do you get those color names? That's where it's down here. So these are all the theme colors. And then you'll notice neutral colors here. Let's back that out. Neutral colors are actually technically theme colors as well, which is a little weird. Uh, black and white are actually theme colors and will adjust based on your theme. So down here, though, are more fixed colors. So you can see these actually have uh, a hex code for those colors down there. So we're going to take a look at all these and how you can apply all these fantastic things to make sure that your formats always match uh, your theme and always look good and match everything else. So we're going to grab that MSBG color. All right, we're going to just say MSBG color dash theme primary. All right, close that. Let's add our close this quickly. Preview that. Wow. All right, you'll notice the first thing is that that text suddenly becomes unreadable. All right, so we can add an MS dash font color dash white. All right, we're going to preview that. Looks a lot better. We save that. I'm going to take a look now if we go and change the look on the site. All right, so if we were to pick one of the dark ones, this is what I mean by that. You'll notice now the text is technically it's uh, black now, even though we said white, right? That's why those neutrals are actually theme-based, and that is super ugly, so I'm going to cancel that. All right, we can go a little further than that, right? So if we come in here and we format that current view, right, and maybe we want to do something where we add a hover style, right? So now we can add another, so we have a space for an additional class, right? So BG color dash theme primary uh, darker, sounds good. And then we say dash dash hover, so we only want to apply that on a hover. So preview that, and let's see what I type in. Oh, theme, not primary darker, theme darker, sorry. Theme darker, I'm going to preview that, maybe. Well, you get the idea. It would work. Oh, well, look at this. Got to do MS dash BG color. Got it? All right, preview that. There we go. So you can see now we get some nice stuff going here. And as you start to do this as you go, uh, you can make some really nice looking things that change styles as you go through it. Now, if you want to do start start to do things where you start to do conditional, right? So if I wanted to say, hey, only mark the ones where there is no birthday applied, right? So that's where I can start to add some nice formatting. So I say it equals if, and I'm going to say, now if I want to check that that birthday, right, is empty, right, I'm going to say to string, I'm going to reference that birthday column, birthday, right, equals equals empty string, and there's a single quotes inside there, then I want you to apply these styles. Now, because I'm now building these, I need to actually wrap those in single quotes themselves, otherwise don't apply anything, all right? So now if we say preview that, let's see, what did I do? That was my birthday, two string. I did not put the inference here. There we go. All right, so now only Stephen Bowers is highlighted, right, with this kind of thing. So you can see you can go a little crazy with this. You can get all sorts of cool stuff going. So that's the first one. All right, so that's your first tip on doing styles here. We're going to see that a little more elaborate in a way that makes a little more sense. So if we come over here, what if I've got something where... 
Now I've got a list here. It's fruit. I've got apples and oranges. These are actually technically content types. Right? I've got an apple content type. I've got an orange content type. Now I want to apply formatting based on that content type. All right, so I can do something very similar right here. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to format the current view. All right, and I'm going to grab, let's grab that schema. All right, let's paste that over here. So I've got my schema. And I'm going to say additional row class. All right, so very similar here. But instead this time, I'm going to do something based on the content type. So now I'm going to say, I'm going to reference the content type, which is a little strange. I'm going to talk about some of the quirks with this. So if I say double sign content type, you'll notice that this is not a part of the view. So things like ID, content type, content type ID uh, are available regardless of, of what your view fields are, which is unusual most of the time in view formatting or column formatting to reference another column that needs to be a part of the specific view you're on. All right, so if I'm going to say if content type, and this is just the internal name, equals apple, all right, let's do ms-bg-color-red-dark. That's a beautiful color, right? Otherwise, since it's orange, is the opposite. We're going to say ms-bg-color. We're going to say orange-lighter. Now, keep in mind, these are case-sensitive, so let's do that. And then because I'm, I also want to do that same thing where I want that text to look correct, I'm going to do string concatenation right here in this formula. formula. So I'm going to say plus the space ms font color dash white. All right, let's close that guy. Butter and squiggly. Let's preview that. And we didn't do it. So that's when we just cut and paste the one I already did. Hey, look at that. It works. Magic. All right. So we see here, so yeah, someone's asking here, uh, if, can you do else if? Right, so the first part, so the if, you'll see in these parentheses here. So this is the condition, right? If this is true, do the first item here, right? So I've got the first item here, then you're going to put a comma. This is the else, All right? So if you wanted to do an if else, all you would do is nest another if statement right here where I've got my else, All right? So you can have infinite number of nested if statements here. I don't recommend you go infinite. Uh, but you can certainly go several levels deep. That's exactly how you would create uh, a switch statement, right? So if you wanted to switch based off of a status column and you wanted to apply like maybe four different styles based on that, you would just nest those if statements right there in the else parameter. Got it? Very exciting. So that's beautiful. We've got, you know, our content type is now determining the color we apply. Now, if we wanted to do something maybe a little more elaborate, uh, that's where we've got a nice sample for you. Um, so if we come over here to our sample repo, that's the in SharePoint currently, it's an SP dev list formatting, All right? So we'll paste that link for you All right in the chat. There you go. All right. Woo. Now, if we take a look here, we've got a view sample uh, called content type format, which will illustrate some of these things. Uh, real quick before I do that, let's switch back over here and show you a couple do's and don'ts. So when you reference a content type in list formatting, you can always reference the content type ID, or you can reference the content type. So the content type ID is going to be a GUID. There's no squigglies or anything. It's just the number with the hyphens. Uh, it's always available regardless of what you do, but it is the list content type ID. So it's not your site content type ID, uh, which generally you're not going to care that much, uh, but it's a bit of a pain. And if you ever try and apply this format to any other list, right, even when you've got that same content type on your site collection, it's not going to to work. You're going to have to change that ID. So that's why it gets a thumbs down. Do not re recommend. So the content type is just the internal name, so it's the text, and it's almost always available. So there's a weird little bug right now that when you add content type um, to your view, if you do that, uh, it will not uh, apply correctly. So content type no longer becomes available for you as a reference. So that's a weird quirk. It's the only one that really works that way right now. Uh, but just keep in mind, don't add it to your view. If you're going to apply a format anyway, there's really very little reason to add that to your view because you can reference that value regardless. Uh, just to show you what I mean on that, if we take a look. So I've got this one here. If I go to Simple Rose Failure, right, you can see where I've got the content type here. You can see it's not detecting anything. It's just doing that L condition, right? And if I go to Show Hide Columns, right, I take that out. Well, then there we go. So that's just kind of a weird quirk. Just don't add it if you don't want to use it. Got it? All right. So now let's take a look at something that's a little more elaborate. So if we come in here to this content type format, I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to grab this thing, the whole thing. I don't have to download anything. I just go to our repo, 
I'm just going to select the whole thing. I'm going to right click. I'm going to copy that. Then I'm going to come over here. And we're going to see a couple of things. Let's switch back to simple rows. All right, let's format that current view. I'm going to paste that thing in here. Boom. Preview that. Nice. Beautiful. So we're going to show you a couple of different things inside this format uh, that are worth taking a look at. The first one uh, is how we're referencing these images, right? So how are these images getting referenced? So you can certainly upload these. These images are just in the documents library in a folder called fruit. All right, so I've got fruit here, and there they all are. Um, and so we're referencing them. If you take a look at the sample itself, uh, let's see the image right here. All right, so we're just building it, shared documents fruit, and we're putting in the type. So we're checking the content type, and we're then we're depending on that, which column we want to pull that value from, right? So it's a little convoluted, but the main thing I want to point you to is this. This is a relative link. So there's some disadvantages and advantages to doing this. Uh, one advantage is then I can move this around from site to site if I'm relatively certain where I'm showing this format, and it's not a problem. I don't have to put in the full URL to the site. Otherwise, right, I've got to put in my tenant. Uh, I'm going to pull that full URL, right, because I've got the sites. I can't just put a slash. Um, so the format then becomes very specific to a site. So by putting the dot, dot, slash, dot, dot, slash, right, I'm doing a relative uh, reference to those images. So that can be really nice when I want to apply this to multiple sites or I want to move this thing around, which we'll take a look at in a minute. Uh, but again, if you're doing things where you're going to put it on pages and those pages are nested within folders, then that's going to be causing a problem if you're using this within the web part. So just something to keep in mind. It's one of your options. Uh, to get away from that hard coding of your full-on site URL. Got it? All right. Woo! So now the other thing I wanted to draw your attention to, right, so if you'll notice here we've got these things that are in different sizes, and as I resize this window, all right, let's, well, you can see when I format the view, right, things shift around, they move around. Uh, we've got a couple of things like that, so there's another really great one um, where you can see there's some nice tile format in the sample repo. You take a look at that. Uh, but how is that accomplished? So that's accomplished just right here up with that. in our main element. So we've got a row formatter and our main element type. We've got this style, and all we're doing is this float left. Now, there's a couple of caveats with that. The nice thing is it makes these things completely dependent. If you're going to do that, highly recommend you hide the column header, hide the selection, because those get extra confusing uh, when you're doing that. Uh, one caveat is we're finding that there is currently a bug with the paging. So if you've got a large amount of, uh, of items in your list or your view, don't do the float left because uh, there's some issues there where it's trying to retrieve that kind of infinite scroll in that paging. Uh, I expect that to be resolved, but for now, just be aware of that when you use the float left. But it's a really powerful way to create a really dynamic visualization, right, that uh, doesn't look at all like a standard list view, right? So. Now, let's move on to the next little tip here. So the next tip is that you guys may or may not be aware that column formatting and view formatting is fully supported by PNP remote provisioning. So you're able to take these things. So if you're doing the kind of stuff that we talked about here, where you're putting the uh, relative links, right, you're not using the content type ID, which is that list content type, you can grab this whole thing, right, and you can move it from site to site. So generally, if you're moving a format, you can just come in here, you can select all, and you can copy that, and you can paste it to other sites. But what happens when you've got baggage such as, you know, a specific view you want to apply, or you've got a list with specific columns, or in this case, content types and site columns, and all that together? Well, the perfect way to kind of solutionize this whole thing is PNP remote provisioning. All right, we can see that here. So I come over here, and I'm going to create a new site, all right, and uh, we'll click the communication site, sure. Create a fruit site. Let's see if I have a fruit site already. I don't. All right, perfect. So we're going to finish that. We're going to apply that. So I've gone ahead and I've extracted a template, right? We're not going to go into details of that. We've gone over that a number of times. Um, and I have a link for you if you want to research some of that. Uh, but it's really just a simple PowerShell command. Um, you're going to pull that out. So I'm going to do it on my current one. And then all I've done is I've gone and I've edited it slightly. So you can actually see this in the repo for that sample. I've got this fruit template XML file. So this is just remote provisioning here. All right, you can see our exciting site columns coming on over here, right, and our content types are coming. And then we have our list instance where we have those content types. Now, I did, I did two minor uh, things to this, right, where I made it where it's going to remove the default item content type. That's a simple manual edit. 
You can see here, though, this is where our custom formatter for the view is actually being applied. So the whole view format is right here, right in line. Pretty easy to do. And then the other thing here is I added this files here, which is just going to make sure that our images get added, right? So it's just copying one directory to another, right? So it's copying the local directory. It, by the way, always looks so yeah. beautiful when you're mix and matching XML and JSON, but that's... Oh, isn't that wonderful? Yeah. It's yes, great. It is. <laughs> yeah. You get these... At least this one, it doesn't look so bad. Sometimes when you see some of those uh, site designs, some other stuff, it gets a little crazy. Yeah. The last thing, though, is, like, I didn't write this, right? This was generated for me by the, the remote provisioning engine. All I did was run a command that said, uh, get PNP, what is it, provisioning template. Yep. That's all I ran and saved as the XML file. I came in and I added this little thing down here. This is normally not necessary, but I have those images. Uh, so generally, you don't even need to manually edit these things. It's all magic as far as we're all concerned, right? Okay. So now I've got my fruit site, right? I don't have anything on it. It's very sad, very sad, empty site. But if I come down here, right? So I'm in here. So what do we call fruit? I'm going to connect PMP online. I'm just going to connect there. <laughs> Apply for PMP provisioning template. I'm going to give it the path, which in this case is, what is that? Fruit template.xml, right? So that's all I'm going to do. So I'm going to run that guy. And all this is doing is doing a differential against the site versus what I've got in my in my template there, my uh, my PMP provisioning template. And it's applying my content types. It's applying my site columns. It's applying the list. It's adding those content types to that list instance. And it's applying that view format. And it's uploading those individual image files, which you can see right now. So it's putting all of that. And because I use those relative image links, Right? And I use the content type internal name. Ignore that error. That's because I haven't updated my provisioning template. All right. Uh, my PFP PowerShell. All right. So if I come back, though, to the site. All right. So now I've got my fruit site. I'm going to just refresh here. I should have a fruit list. There it is. All right. And I don't have anything in it. But if I add, you know, a couple of, let's add, could have added, let's add a new apple. All right. So I add an apple, a red delicious. Wowee. All right. I save that. You see, now I have a format that's all applied on my brand new site, so you could easily wrap some of this stuff up, throw it in um, alongside with some of your site designs or site scripts, and create a really powerful way to take your formats and make them a little more generic that apply with the themes and apply with those colors. It can be applied all across everything. Okay, so that's several tips all in one, and here's your resources on that. So. If you want to find out more about those styles, the specific way you had to format those class names, you're going to go to the UI Fabric site, and you're going to go to the colors. Uh, there's also several things where you can do with fonts. Uh, so if you want to take a look at the fonts, uh, you want to apply different font weights or font styles. There's some pre pre-configured pieces there. Uh, you want to check out our samples. There's a ton of samples. A lot of them are using uh, these specific theme classes. Uh, so you're going to see examples of that. You're also going to be able to see this content type format. And again, it's not a very pretty format, but the whole idea is just to see how you're applying those content types. Uh, one caveat to note there is there's not, you know, a branching where I say, hey, if it's this content type, apply this format, or if it's this content type, apply this format. You're going to be checking if it's this content type for each individual attribute. Uh, so take a look at that. It's just a different way to think about it, but it's one that's it's helpful to take a look at and really kind of familiarize yourself with that. But you can do a lot of really cool things to create some really dynamic views when you're mixing in those content types. And then if you're interested in what we just showed at the end there, it's a little more advanced, the PNP provisioning, check that out. There's a ton of stuff with that. And here's a blog post that kind of goes over the details of uh, using theme colors and the, the UI fabric styles within your list formatting. All right, any questions? I'll be here in the chat. Uh, but that's the main thing I got here. Um, all right, cool. Thank you.